um, I'm back at Perfect and Persevere. Um, so right now it's about 28 degrees, give or take. Um, it has been freezing the last two days. Um, and honestly, it's been pretty like iced over for the most part. The roads have been iced, but now it's actually, I guess the atmosphere is warmer because it's actually raining instead of snowing, which is, I guess, a good thing and a bad thing because it'll probably mean the roads will stick again or ice again. But I wanted to get out a little bit in this and uh, test a theory a little bit. And um, so let me preface that with I actually have some, like, of course, I have a Gore Tex jacket. I wore it in one of my other videos. And I actually have, like, civilian, you know, like Columbia or North Face. I actually have like, a North Face top shell that'd be good right now. It's only, like, lightly raining. But I wanted to mess around with some more, like, camouflage and military esque. I hate using the word military esque because it, it, it could just be whatever but um yeah i want to test some of that versus like if i just walk out here in my soft shell you know obviously it's gonna work because that's what it's for and maybe one day i'll probably pick up you know like a either like a earth tone soft shell or an earth tone windbreaker or rain jacket or even a camouflage one and spend the coin on them but uh, i'm gonna go ahead and skip to what i want to talk about and that is basically i want to go out and mess around with basically i'm wearing a like a level one is level one type uh long sleeve shirt polyester um then i'm wearing my wool sweater 100 percent wool uh woolly pulley and then i'm wearing this civilian windbreaker just a pretty light you know zip up uh windbreaker and then i'm wearing a 5050 nico uh my AO, aor2 top and you might be like, hey man, if it's like freezing outside and it's sleeting, why aren't you wearing your Gore-Tex? Or why don't you just wear the camo windbreaker? Or just your windbreaker or a soft shell? And that is basically, um, I, there's, there's one theory or philosophy that I've heard. And that is, well, if everyone, let's say you're either limited on resources or um, uniformity or whatever. And let's say... Um, your group run, runs a certain BDU top, or maybe you have this on and then the weather changes. So basically, let's say everyone's wearing a standard BDU top. It's one of the easiest items to get, especially if you go on the eBay market and you're getting just a surplus. Um, heck, even some of the OCP stuff is getting really cheap right now. But for instance, if that's all you had, and then let's say you have civilian clothes, like I was saying, like I have a civilian windbreaker or a civilian rain jacket or a civilian soft shell is you could easily throw if you size up accordingly your BDU top over all of that so honestly um, this shirt you know it's not really it's not water resistant um, it's a little bit wind resistant but if it gets soaked it's just gonna get soaked because um, it's just 50, 50, 50 Nyko so there's that 50% of cotton in there which um, normally you'd hear me and other people saying avoid cotton but BDU tops that's and stuff like that 50-50 Nyko is a very popular material for a reason. But in this type of weather, uh, what, the, what I've always, that philosophy is that your BDU top would protect your like sensitive layers. Like most windbreakers, even some of the, uh, unless you get some like really high grade military stuff, is usually pretty lightweight. And It'll, it'll snag on thorns and brush and stuff like that, so you'll, you'll ruin your windbreaker if you actually go through some of that stuff. Um, Gore-Tex um, is usually pretty tough, but it's also loud. Like, I have some Gore-Tex pants on right now, and it's kind of loud when they swish around, and wearing this over, you know, like a rain jacket or something like that would not only protect it, it would also silence it a little bit, kind of like putting a sock over a canteen. Um, camouflage. So, a lot of uh, polyester the nylon material when um, it kind of tends to shine a little bit just because of the material itself versus BDUs um, it's very reflective of your environment so if it's raining outside your uniform will darken just like the vegetation will darken now you get away with that by wearing a darker you know camouflage rain jacket already like woodland um, I'm actually gonna pick me up a woodland BDU top here shortly but um, yeah so it protection um yeah it'll protect your layers it'll 
give you some camouflage and then also uniformity so for instance if everyone let's say your only your group can only afford one set of uniforms or something like that and that's all you have well and then on top of that you have your regular everyday civilian stuff because i'd rather you go out and buy a rain jacket that's just i don't know a columbia rain jacket and w be prepared in everyday life versus oh i have my military cortex jacket but I'm not going to bring it with me, and then, you know, I have a car accident, and I'm getting rained on, and potentially go hypothermic. So, it's just an option out there. And so the theory is, no matter how wet this top gets, my windbreaker should shed, or not allow any rain, or light rain to get from here, or whatever. None of that water should get through it, because it has to pass through this BDU top, so that's already one layer even if it's not rain resistant and you can obviously put DWR on a BDU top that's totally a thing too so it has to get through that and then it hits the windbreaker so even if this BDU top gets soaked and yeah it might give me a chill factor because I'm now wearing a freezing garment my layers underneath this are super warm and dry and and the other pro about this thing is if the other day I was wearing Gore-Tex is if you move around in Gore-Tex, and that was the thing I was trying to say is, I wasn't really carrying a heavy load or moving around a lot, but if I was, something like this could be apt if you are moving around a lot and you're carrying a heavy load and whatnot, because Gore-Tex, if you're doing a ton of work, like I try to point out, is that you will sweat in Gore-Tex. Versus like this, you're giving up some of that rain protection, knowing that your BDU top will get wet, but this is a highly breathable system. Because right now, I'm actually wearing uh, Gore-Tex pants, and I actually... I decided to wear my little like real tree uh, long johns underneath here and they're honestly a little bit too warm just because of Gore-Tex trapping a lot of heat versus my upper body while this shirt's getting a little bit damp right now um, I'm pretty comfortable honestly now I'd probably switch out a layer if I had to wear like a heavy chest rig or something like that because I probably would start perspirating even though I'm wearing a this is still pretty breathable but um, I, uh, I would rather be protected than too warm if that makes sense because sweating is while most people think hypothermia is you get outside and get too cold and you die full that is a thing but it's usually because you started sweating somehow and then your sweat froze um, this is not the end all be all solution this is just something I've played around with and I'm not recommending it at all I'm just maybe think about it um, I know Red Beard Tactical mentioned wearing a windbreaker in light rain and stuff like that and you could throw your camis over it or whatever but yeah just think about it i thought i'd give it a try obviously um i don't i can't really test a long-term test of this like if i were to wear this for like 48 hours what would what would actually happen but something like this it would be probably good for a short-term thing where it's like hey i don't really care if my bdu top gets soaked because i only need to go for like 24 hours and then i'm done or something like that but um hope y'all like this stay safe out there and god bless